I've been playing some games that lean very at the lean heavy into physics recently. Very different games, mind you. Katabari, Damacy, and Prey 2018. I've always sort of leaned into the argument that the weak CPU in last gen consoles is the reason that physics took a backseat in recent games, but I'm beginning to think that it isn't really true. With those two games and the recent Zelda pushing physics to the forefront on quote unquote unquote, unquote weak hardware, it seems that this is an intentional design decision. What do you hmm. think uh, leads to physics as a gameplay element to be pushed into the background in modern games? Uh, thoughts, Oliver? Yeah, I do think that it's been pushed to the side intentionally, mostly because physics seem very hard to work with, uh, I imagine. You have to bound physics in all kinds of ways and constrain them, and it's really hard to get them to react in a predictable and true-to-life manner, I think, especially when they're for gameplay-critical elements. Some of the best physics-based ga gameplay is in the older titles, like Half-Life 2, though if you go back to that title, the physics aren't especially realistic, but yeah. they're predictable and they work for, for that title. Yeah, Crisis, of course. Yeah, yeah Crisis is another example. And I think, yeah. also, if you look at Zelda, because Zelda is an interesting example, it's doing a lot of great physics stuff, and you know I really, really like Tears of the Kingdom quite a lot. But it, it's not pushing like a ton of physicalized objects at once. Like in my, no. in my gameplay, whenever I tried to play with too many objects and play with physics, uh, the frame rate just crashed. So, <laughs> you know, it's doing great stuff with physics, but it's not doing like a lot of really number crunchy stuff with tons of physics objects at once. You know, I think I think there is a distinction there when we talk about like a game that uses physics for gameplay versus a game that has just tons of physics everywhere, right? Right, mm. that's a good distinction. Mm -hmm. I was about to say the exact same thing. Like what I see in Tears of the Kingdom reminds me a lot of things that people were doing in Gary's Mod back in the day, if you've ever played mm -hmm. Gary's Mod, where you can att like attach like a force multiplier to something and then all of a sudden it can move forward, you know, or you can like stack a few things and they'll fall down. Nothing too intense that we haven't seen beyond the Xbox 360 PS3 generation, which is interesting why they mentioned Katamari Damacy or I'll go back to Red Faction Guerrilla or just a lot of the old three old ps3 360 era did a lot of this and i think the the author is correct i think it, cpu probably didn't help the situation definitely for a lot of titles when they wanted to do something they would be like man maybe we can't but also there's just extreme changes in design that oliver mentions there like it's it's a lot easier to make something much more predictable and less computationally complex when you can do it in a scripted manner and maybe it also looks better to a number of people uh, based upon the the hardware constraints so yeah it's it's style too like games changed in style radically over that xbox 360 ps3 generation they were usually a lot smaller scale and less polished in the beginning and then they got a lot larger and much more polished while being maybe less ambitious in certain aspects towards the end 